Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, just the follow-up part here to the 10 Neo Geo boards I've been looking at for Mike Perman. So this next one gives a Z80 error. It's got stock BIOS soldered on. It's a 1AX. As you can see, Z80 error. So uh, I'll fit a socket on there. We'll remove the ROM and get the diagnostics BIOS on. I'd just like to test out other aspects of the system before I do anything with it. But then I think we'll swap out the Z80 first before we jump to the Neo buff because you never know, we could have looked out, it might just be the Z80. But whilst the desoldering station's heating up, I'll uh, have an inspection around the board. Uh, I think as soon as my soldering irons up, I'm sure remove the battery. Uh, you can see this is the scary type. The button cell ones don't tend to leak, but these do. Uh, yeah, we're lucky that hasn't uh, leaked everywhere. So what I've been doing on these is going around the pins, you know, freeing up the pins I can with the desolder station here. And then as soon as we get to a point where most of the solder has been removed, I'll use hot air to free the chip up. It just, it's quick and easy. It means you don't have to worry about trying to unblock those last few holes. Um, and you've got the least risk of damage. But it does take a bit of effort actually with these large dip chips to get it up to temperature. So most of the solder removed from there. I'm just going to uh, preheat the underside of the board here uh, for a couple of minutes and then we'll swap over to the other side. As you can see, the way I do this, I keep the board off the floor by a good ooh, half a foot. A couple of metal containers, one on each side, just to uh, give me some elevation here. There we go. Yeah, I made that look uh, far more treacherous and painful than it actually is. It's, it's not as difficult as I made it look there. But the main thing is, can you see we've got no damage there at all? And I guarantee that ROM will be fine. So I cleaned up underneath with some IPN cotton buds, you can see just around this immediate area. So finally just go over each of the uh, points here. So this is precisely why I wanted to get a diagnostics room on there. As you can see we've got a pallet issue as well as the Z80 and I suspect the pallet is tested before the Z80. So it's going to be Neo Buff again, so we're going to have to swap the Neo Buff out in the pallet area. Uh, let's just see if we can get into the test menu to see what else is wrong, if anything, with this board. So that you do that by holding down A, B, C, D uh, and hold down select and start at the same time and then it goes into this menu. So we'll do calendar. That looks okay for the three different frequencies. Colour bars. That looks okay. Controller. Left, right, up, down, A, B, C, D. I tend to hold those down because sometimes they can be, they can glitch out when you go off and on like that if you've got a problem. So holding them all down is uh, a good thing to do as well. Select and start. Let's try that again. Start. Yeah. Obviously, if you press select and start, it resets the menu. Not bother about player two for the moment. We can deal with that later. Well, I'll do that as a final test later. But for now, we've got what we need there. So let's just do that again. Uh, w RAM, yeah, that's passing. Pallets, RAM we know is failing. V RAM, hold down A, yeah, that's passing. Uh, 2K V RAM, and that's passing. So, yeah, we've got a problem with the pallet, that Neo Buff, I'll swap that, and uh, problem with the Z80. So then what I do is try and find one corner, the flat corner, pin one is the easiest corner to deal with, but when the chips round a certain way on the board you might have no choice. Uh, and try and get maybe a scalpel or something on the underside, it's super hard to do. Um, if your board was in a clamp, mine isn't, mine's just supported on two metal uh, things. Let's change the angle slightly here so I can get around this side, because this side's easiest to get something under actually, I think. And you just want to apply a bit of constant force to the underside of that point there. And as it reaches temperature, it'll start to uh, lift on that one corner. But try and keep temperature on the other sides as well, you know. Try and even the uh, heat there. Can you hear? Pins start to just click one by one as they start to free up. But as I keep saying throughout these videos, what you're not doing is trying to leave the thing off. You want it to come off when it's ready. 
all you're doing is providing a little bit of leverage, just turn a little bit of support there, the, almost the way of the tool itself rather than anything else. You see that's gone right underneath there now actually, so we've got to be super careful because we're not trying to lever this off. We just want to free the pins up when they're ready. There we go. No damage. Leave it for a minute or two to cool down a little bit, but then get your flux on there and start to, uh, you know, clean up with the uh, desolder braid as the board is still warm because you'll you need hardly any heat at all because it's preheated and it just makes it really super easy to remove all the solder yeah and I try and go in this direction again I'm sorry I say the same thing as in all my videos but yeah because you, you've got more you know the pad has got more grip on the board in that direction so it makes more sense to go in that direction. Uh, you know, there's, well, there's two directions you could go in. You can go left or right on those pads that I'm working on at the moment. But you see what I mean? You know, if you go sideways like that, I, I found from prior experience, you've got more chance of uh, pulling uh, pads off. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty tidy. So our donor board is looking a bit bare here. Bear in mind, I haven't cleaned any of the uh, solder off, so these look a mess, but I haven't damaged a single pad. We can work on this board at some point if we had any neo buff chips. Um, but one thing I have been doing with this board throughout the videos here is each time I've took one of these chips off that I know is not critical, I've tested it to see if there's any life, because this was watchdogging, even with the diagnostics BIOS. But as I've removed the neo buffs here, because that's like on the data bus, that's on the data bus, those are on the data bus, I think one of those is, one's on the Z8 side, one's on the 68K, but as I've removed those, I've tested, um, you know, and it was not any different. So I still think we're in the realms of uh, one of these two here, or uh, the PALs, I think. I mean, it could still be something else, that I think that's got data bus connections, so it could be that. Uh, the other critical thing is the D0, that needs to go back on there if it was going to work on this board. So in terms of which of these do we go for as a donor, well, the Z80s, we've seen every single time that fails, nearly on every single one of these boards I've had that fail. So I'm tempted to go with the one that's on the controller area, only four bits go through there, so it shouldn't have had much use. Now one of the dilemmas I've got, the, dile the dilemma I have with this, is whenever I've took the one from down here, which where the controls work, and stuck that into a position where it's bi-directional, like the pallets or up here G11 the interface to the car on the prog bus I found that you don't they don't work you, you stick it back over here again and it works because it's working only in one direction and I can't help but wonder because I've, I've seen two boards that's happened on now I can't help but wonder if SNK when they tested these if it failed quality control but it worked in one direction they went up oh, stick on the controller out put there no issues but the Z81, the one in there, that position there seems to fail all the blooming time I haven't seen one where that's not failed yet so I'm inclined to go with that one. I've removed the solder from underneath with the solder braid, uh, EEV block ruler, yeah Dave Jones, no other ruler will do the job. I just want to make sure they're super flat. So we'll get that onto the uh, board. So without uh, touching the chip, touch the contact, add the solder, that's one pin. Same thing up here, touch the pad, not the contact, that's that one done. Press it down, reflow it, hold it, press it down, reflow it, hold it, inspect. Yeah, and that's looking pretty good, but the first pin here just needs just pushing down a little bit. There we go, I think that's probably it. Yeah, occasionally you'll get the edge pins will just be bent out of position, you know, just in one corner or something where you've lifted it. But uh, yeah, that's fine. So we can just add a bit of flux. I mean, there's just some flux still on there, but yeah, going to need another tube of flux. I've gone through two tubes of flux so far on these boards. There's barely anything left in this tube. Clean the tip. Uh, yeah, I do need a new tip. I'm still waiting for it to uh, be delivered. I'll start on one of the sides that's not anchored. Uh, as you can see, we'll just drag along like that. I'll also drag on top of the pins like that just because you get cleaner uh, contacts and things. Uh, and then typically um, 
I'll, you'll see me do that as well. You just get a nice uh, even distribution of the sold on the edges there. Rinse, repeat for the other three sides. Well, I'll be honest, I didn't have a high level of confidence that that neobuff was going to be okay because it's in a controller area. But actually, all tests passed, so that's uh, looking pretty good. So we can deal with the Z8 here next. Uh, that's going to be, hopefully, not another neobuff, but it could well be. So I'll get the uh, DAG cart in there, just So M1 DAG in, let's hold down D and do a reset. Yeah, SM1. 3C, 4C. It's always nearly 3C, 4C. Every one of these, I've seen that same bit as a problem. It's strange, isn't it? It's strange how it's always that one bit that seems to fail on these. And it's always usually the Neobuff, one of the 273s, and the Z80 when you see that. I'm going to start by just swapping out the Z80, actually. Exactly the same after swapping out the Z80, so Neobuff and 273s, I think. So got the replacement neo buff on there, that's from the Z80 area of that spares board. So I don't hold high hopes that that's going to solve it, but we'll give it a try. Next we'll probably move on to the 273s, but I suspect that might not be a good neo buff. Well this is interesting, I've worked out what was wrong with the donor board. Uh, just watch. It's not booting. We're not even getting to the diagnostics. So it was that neo buff, that was what was wrong with the very very first board that we've been using for, you know, for spares for this other board. That now means I've got to take that neo buff off and go and find another neo buff. Um, and we've run out on the spares board, so I'm going to have to move on to another board. What I could do is take one from the GA11 position. Uh, that's the chip that interfaces with the program uh, interface on the car. And we could bypass that on one of the boards. Well, in theory, we could do that on all the boards, actually, to buy us a load of neo buffs. But it's really fiddly to do. I'd prefer to see if I can get a PCB or something. The one there that had a bit, one bit faulty, I'm going to stick that here because there's only four bits used on this one here. I'm going to shift this one over there because, well, we don't know whether this one works entirely because only four bits are being used at the moment, but the controls, I think, uh, did work. Well, I don't think I've tested player two. Yeah, we'll do that anyway. Uh, we'll shift that one over here. The other thing I could do is remove GA11, stick that there, and then bypass that. But oh, I really don't want to get into the realm of having to do loads of bypass things because it's like 16 wires. It's just a nightmare to do. So I've got the one from there, there. I'm going to test it now. We'll be missing the start and select buttons, I think. But we should at least be able to hold down D to go into the Z80 test. So the interesting thing testing with that, we've got a different error. Now, is that because we're missing that second Neo buff? I'm sure that's only related to the controllers. So I don't know if that's a red herring uh, on the diagnostics there, or whether that faulty Neo buff has killed something, actually. That's a possibility. So the good news is, uh, well, it's bad news, but it's good news. We've got rid of that MMIO error. Um, I'm guessing that maybe because the start and select buttons and were being detectors held down because that controller, that chip was missing. But we've got exactly the same error. So I think the 273 um, or the SM1. I think the next thing I'm going to do is bypass the SM1. So swapping out the top one, which is the Z80 268K. You know, to the 68K. Same error. So I'm going to swap out the other 273. And again, it's another who f Ray. Sorry, you've probably never heard me swear so much on these videos. These Neo Geos are an absolute to get working. If I run the test again, you'll see we get that because I've not got the ROM on there at the moment. Start. All tests passed. So what I did there is I finally removed the GA11 one at Neobuff and put that in the Z80 spot. So it's like all these Neobuffs are faulty. It's like you swap one from one place, you think it's probably going to be alright. It isn't. There's more probability that it's going to be faulty in another location the same. Uh, and as you start taking them off spare boards and things, you don't know what state they are on the spare boards, and they're actually in, you know, faulty amongst these boards in the same sort of locations. I'm seeing that I've had two lots of pallet problems, two or three lots of Z80 issues. Yeah, so the problems are pretty uh, bad on these boards, actually. Uh, if I'd known what I know now, I wouldn't have offered to look at these boards, if I'm honest. They are soul-destroying to work on, seriously soul-destroying. 
I can only imagine the easier way of working out what's faulty would be to connect up a logic analyzer. And that's fine if you've got maybe a clip that you know is designed for that type of chip that you can stick on it and on something to stick on the 273s, etc. But the yeah, these are just not easy to work on. Seriously not easy to work on. And the pins are so close together that if you try clipping little probes on, you know, little uh, logic analyzer probes, you clip like three or four and then you can't fit anymore because they're all bunched up. You need like this, I don't know, maybe this is even smaller ones than the ones I'm using, I don't know. So yeah, they are very, very difficult and time consuming to repair these one A's. So I'll uh, get the ROM back on here, um, clean up, reflow some of the connections because they need redoing. We've got a chip missing here now, so um, just for the moment I'm going to leave that empty. Um, in fact we can't because it's not going to boot a car, is it? I think what I'll do is I'll just borrow one off one of the other boards to get this one up and running and we're going to have to designate a second board as a spares board now. So with the diagnostics ROM, you don't need that because all it's reading is the M1. The M1 stuff doesn't go through there, it's a different interface. But if you was to try and boot a cart on this now, you'll just get a crosshatch. Nothing but a crosshatch. So if you, you're working on one of these 1As like this or 1AX and you can't get past the crosshatch, it's that chip there. Um, so yeah, the, but the problem is if we put a chip on that's working in one direction for all 16 bits, we may find carts work, but the Neo SD and the 161 in one don't work. And in fact, some carts might not work, depending on whether the uh, program interface is used there to switch, uh, you know, the decoding if you like on the cart to get more memory and stuff, you know, more higher uh, capacity ROMs. I don't know where, I can't remember off the top of my head if there's any games that do that, but um, yeah, that could be an issue. So uh, if I swap that out from a, a random Neo buff on one of the other boards, I'm going to have to uh, pay close attention to uh, testing a, a volume of cars to make sure it's working properly. So SM1 reinstated, the bypass removed, GA11 uh, taken from the other board, second spare board. Let's give that a try. So ignore the hum in there, that's the uh, pot, it's got a bad pot on it again, I just need to clean it up I think. So it's passing the Z80 tests, that's good, uh, no issues at all, nothing with the SM1 which is uh, what we expect to see. So I now need to get a Unibias on it and uh, boot a game I think. Well I didn't want to see that, we've got a cross hatch, which means unless we've got a dirty slot, the Neo buff we've just put into the GA11 position is faulty from the other board. Yep. Oh joy. So this is where we're up to. The Neo buff on the Z80. Just want to reset it. See this black screen? Well, it doesn't work. It's like something's really wrong with the system. And just watch what happens. I'm going to go away, I'm going to take the board, and I'm going to heat that Neo Buff chip for about 20 or 30 seconds. Right, it's at about 30 seconds there. Switch it on, hold down D. Look at that. Passes. This is the blooming problem. These Neo Buff chips, they're just in a terrible state. I've put like three or four in that position already on the Z80 spot. But then you see, see that? Let's turn it, I can't even turn it down. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the Neo Buff that's causing this. And then in a minute we'll start getting Z80 errors. There's nothing wrong with the backup RAM. What's happening is the Z80 Neo Buff is outputting on the data bus when it shouldn't be doing. That's what's happening. And it's interfering with uh, other things, I think. Right, anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'll remove that Neo buff and let's just see if we're getting the, the BRAM error here like this. Maybe we have got a backup RAM error. Maybe that's the problem. But we've also still got a uh, crosshatch where I can't boot the thing. And I've had three different Neo buff chips in the GA11 spot there to try and get the thing booting the car. So, yeah, nightmare. Well, the interesting thing there, I've removed it and we are still getting a uh, backup RAM error. But is this related to the fact that it can't boot the car? Is it the Neo Buff that's there now in GA11 that's causing that backup RAM error? Because we weren't getting backup RAM errors before. That's normal because we've got the Neo Buff uh, removed in the Z80 slot. But that isn't. Well, finally, we've got uh, games booting. 
the graphics aren't quite right as you can see we've got lines and stuff through uh, sprites if I move the cart a little bit uh, wobbles a little bit there so yeah maybe a bad connection on the cart try and clean the cart off she tried a, different, a couple of different bridges um, it could just be the slot that's dirty you might need to go over all of the connects uh, you know connectors into connects and stuff there to fix that yeah a little bit better it's not quite there is it oh just moving the car there hey that's sound back this is remarkable because there's no neo yeah there's no neo buff there at the moment At least another way, and 2610 works. Oh, what on earth's that? See that now? We've got some weird doubled up text going on there. It's gone now. Now yeah, it's alright. Okay, looking a bit more promising. So we need to get the sound back. I need to go find another Neo Buff now that's not temperature sensitive like the last one that was on there. Seems to be working okay. So I still need to find a Neo Buff to fix that Z80 error on that uh, board that's uh, been driving me nuts. But I thought we'd take a step back and then go back to this board now. I'm going to get the D0 back on here get the i0 back on here, the sfix rom the 259, uh, I've got some new 259's ones just arrived <sighs> so you know what I'm like, I was changing my mind before we do that, because that one's got so many chips missing, we'll focus on these other two spare boards so you can see this one's had a, a number of components removed from it as well uh, three Neo Buff chips on there and this one's just one so I'm going to focus on these two boards, I've removed the batteries on these it's a good idea anyway, um, first thing you should do really is remove the batteries uh, just leak some IPA onto that black sponge thing on the back side, just on one side and it, they peel off that easy, you can see uh, I've got a pile of them here and there's a bunch more somewhere else, they just peel off really easily and they don't disintegrate if you do it that way but on both of these I need to remove the ROM, so that's the next thing I'm going to do on both of them so I finally replaced the uh, tip on my solder now and you can see uh, <laughs> just how warm that is, it's bent upwards a bit there, it starts to crack around there, can you see that, uh, it's split in the middle yeah, it was on its last legs. I mean, look how pointed upwards that is there. Yeah, brand new. Sweet. So the BIOS removed from both boards, get sockets onto both of those now. So this one just gives a grey screen. I'm going to probe the uh, watchdog uh, uh, circuit, I think. Well, I'll probe the reset pin, that's the easiest thing. If we're getting pulsing on the reset pin, that would indicate it's in the watchdog. Uh, now, it's had one of the um, Neil Buff chips removed, GA11 on this board. It could well be that one of them is uh, dragging the data bus down, it's, you know, it's interfering with the data bus, got some contention there. So on this one with the grey screen, uh, yeah, the reset side of things confused me. I thought there was an issue, I was measuring the wrong pin. I was looking at the pin in relation to the dip chip, it's actually three pins down I think from there, or two pins down on the PLCC version. Um, but yeah, the reset pin connects to pin 34 on the D0 over here. Uh, and these are ultimately fed the, a reset signal from somewhere else, usually uh, the B1 I think um, which we've not got on here so I'm guessing that's going to be merged with the MGAT or the uh, GRC up here but anyway I've de determined the clock, uh, the resets there the clock's okay so I don't think we've got a dead uh, D0 if you remove the ROM you get the watchdog ticking with the ROM in there you don't well it's still giving a grey screen after removing that one so I'll remove this one uh, and now what I can do is put uh, try these chips on that other board that needs a Z80 uh, and then we can continue working on this one try and work out what's wrong with it but these are not needed but it's worth ruling them out because they do sit on the data bus so I'm going to stick one of the uh, the ones that was on that board back onto this board that needs a Z80 and then that will now mean three of them are working and then I'll shift my attention back to the other boards I think uh, this one's still here needs a socket so I might just move on to that one but it's got a lot of chips missing just like the other one has 
but I suspect on this board when we get the 259 back on there and the it may give us something so I do hope this one works on this board it's the Z80 position from the grey screen board oh, uh, I've got to be super careful oh, doing this is really hard so I've touched that already so now I'm going to need to use the magnifier and move it around Yeah, that's not so bad. I had to readjust that because I did touch the pin. That's the fiddly bit. Some of these I found easier than others, actually. Sometimes I, you know, get it straight away and don't accidentally touch the pin. There we go. That's that anchored. Do this side first, I think. Not really using enough flux there. I've got loads of pins joined. But uh, yeah, I can just uh, deal with that with some braid. What I'm trying to do here is conserve the flux because I have used three whole tubes of flux here. Again, can you see where, this, where there's not enough flux there? It bunches up. I'm going to have to add extra flux just to, to do this properly. So I've designed a PCB, I'll show you that perhaps in the next video. Um, uh, you, the flux has leaked through, you can see this is just a printout to check the profile of it and everything lines up there, it perhaps just needs shifting a bit to the one side here, um, but for the most part the it, print there seems okay, i uh, just peel that off, I don't want it stuck on there permanently. But you can see how small that's going to be, I mean look at the traces, my printer can't even print the things, so I hope the fabricator can actually produce this. I mean, it's in production, it says at the moment. They haven't contacted me, so I'm assuming it, it's possible. Uh, and you can see the little uh, 245 chips here. Look how small those are, it's crazy. I am going to really struggle to assemble this. It might be a case of getting some solder paste on there and some flux and using hot air to get the chips to go on. And the PCB is going to be like 0.6 uh, millimeters thick. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really, I think someone suggested using castellated ed edges, so that's like a wire, you know, on the very edge there, effectively, that allows you to, you know, solder on a bit easier. But because it's going to be super thin, hopefully it'll fit, but yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a prototype. We may have to hit the drawing board again and produce a version 2 in order to get it work, and I don't know. But I've also ordered, prior to that, I ordered, did a bypass, a GA11 bypass, just the wires going straight through, so we can swap out, at the very least, all the ones in the GA11 spot. And I think that should be okay, it's going to be the same thickness of board, so as long as we can join on the edges there, it should be alright. But in the meantime, uh, I'm shifting my attention again. I'm having to, like, you know, stop doing what I'm doing on each of these boards, move to the next board to work out where the faults are, where things are missing, you know, etc. So this one is I removed the uh, ROM from. It needs cleaning up. I've not cleaned up here yet. Uh, so we'll get a socket on this one. Uh, I'll get the 259 back on here. I've got some new 259s. Um, and then it's got obviously some Neo buffs and 273s missing here. But. I want to see what state this one's in at that point. It should hopefully boot with the diagnostics. If we're getting like a grey screen or a fixed you know, watchdog, we've still got a problem somewhere else. Um, but hopefully this board might boot up. Um, and then maybe I can start to... Because what I've got here now is a big pile of these Neo buffs. And I think at least three or four of them I was experimenting swapping out with the Z80 position on one board and it's not resolved it, despite everything else being swapped apart from the RAM and the YM2610 on that board. So uh, what I'm trying to get at is I could have three or four of these that I've taken off that actually are okay. So I can just gradually reintroduce them. If I can get one of these boards up and running now, I can reintroduce them one at a time. Start with the pallet area. As long as we don't get a pallet uh, RAM issue, we know that one's okay, and then I can move on to uh, maybe the, the controllers up here, test the start and select buttons, as long as that works okay, that one's okay. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, it's a uh, pain, an absolute pain working on these. So we've got a 259 on there, we've got our socket on there, let's go and give this one a try. So this one's doing pretty much the same as uh, the other board I was looking at, which gave a grey screen. This was grey a minute ago, and now it's gone red. Nothing's getting warm, we're not getting the watchdog, but if I remove the ROM, but you'll see without a ROM, no diagnostics ROM, we get watchdog. 
So, I find that interesting. So I'm going to sidestep back to this board now. This was the original spares board. It's got all of the Neo buff chips missing. But we'll get the Neo I0 back on there, get the fixed ROM, get the 259, get the D0, uh, and then see what this one's doing now. Because I'm guessing where it was doing a watchdog before, maybe this one will come back to life. Uh, and then at least I can use this as a, a way to start to test some of these Neo buffs. I'm just going to focus on seeing if I can just get this boot in with a pallet error. And then we'll just use the uh, the chip here uh, to, in order to test some of the ones that I want to reintroduce back onto this board. See if we can get this board up and running. Oh yes, diagnosis correct. It needed that uh, neo buff for the pallet. Now the interesting thing is, can you see that looks absolutely crazy? We've got the wrong colours, you know, which would indicate that the, there's a problem with the pallet still, which I suspected because I'm putting a neo buff on there that I'm not sure about. It probably doesn't work. In fact, it well, this confirms it definitely doesn't work. But can you see the text is messed up? Now just watch this, I, just, I thought let's just press the board just see if we've got a bad connection on the GRC or the MGAT. See that? So we've got Z80 dead error comma issue. Now it's doing that because the controller's not connected at the moment so it's trying to test everything. It thinks the button's being held down. If we switch it off and on we might skip past that and get a different error. We might be able to get past the comma issue. So, there we go, W RAM is that, I'll press the buttons down, press the board down rather, yeah, W RAM, address, 1000 actual, 4000 expected, 0000, zero, zero, zero. so yeah, there's a, a few issues with this board, to say the least, I need to work out where that bad connection is now, I think, uh, yeah, I think I know where the bad connection is actually, I think it's the 259, yeah, so I reflowed around the uh, 259 there and cleaned up actually. I've given that whole area a really good clean. And you can see we're getting a consistent display now. I'm not sure how well that's coming out. I'll just zoom in a bit. You can see we're getting a Z80 error, but that's because there's no 273s uh, on there and the Neo buffs missing. We're also missing the controller Neo buffs and the one at GA11. So this board's had a bit of a promotion actually, it's been promoted from a, a junk uh, spares board to needing 5 Neo buff chips and an upper BRAM. Uh, I haven't cleaned up the flux around the things that I still need to replace, but I have cleaned up around the uh, pallet chip, although that needs replacing, uh, and up here. This is going to be reflowed, can you see, if you just look at an angle, it's like the solder has not joined on the uh, underside. It's okay on the top side here, but like behind, where you can't see, it's just not flowed very well. The flux, the fake Antex flux is awful. So I will reflow that uh, as we make some progress. But it's interesting uh, how this board started off as not being able to boot actually from the uh, diagnostics. It was just watchdogging even with the diagram. I need to relabel that because it's had my PA and flux and all sorts on it. But uh, yeah, we started off not being able to boot this board at all, even with the diagnostics ROM. And it was the NeoBuff in this position here killing the 68k data bus at some point in the boot process and the other thing we learned here is obviously without you know if that's failed completely but it's not output into the data bus and interfering with the cpu you'll just get a gray screen or maybe a different color screen solid color which could lead you to wonder what on earth is going on uh, you know elsewhere when actually all it is is you've got a pallet problem so yeah i'll put that one now to the side we know what we need to do with this one it's just a problem of neo buff chips. So this is the other grey screen board after swapping out the uh, neo buff there. Well, it didn't have a neo buff. I was just getting a grey screen, put a neo buff on. It's washed off in again. So that neo buff is faulty. So as I'm going through these now, just testing them on this board in this position, and uh, any that give a watchdog like that, I'm just going to uh, bin. Back over to the one with the BRAM and the five neo buffs. You can see I started to put some of the other chips from the other boards uh, on here. That one there, it goes straight into the sound test, so it's holding D down, so that's faulty. This one here, select and start, does work. I can actually press select to start to reset. Now, obviously I've not tested player two, but I now need to swap this one out again. This is the problem. It's like, on uh, I would say on every one of these boards, there's been a minimum of three, on average, neo buff faults, maybe even four because I've got a few three boards here with hardly any buff chips left on them at all. So you can see what's happening here now. I've swapped uh, that, uh, the main Neo buff for the control port there again. And whilst it works initially, let me just do a, a soft reboot there. Now let's do that again. Yeah, if I do a soft reboot, hold down ABCD. Now I can't get into it. 
Yeah, now it's doing something weird with the controls. I can't even get to the test menu. Yeah, these Neo Buff chips are an absolute nightmare. Well, I am never doing a repair like this again. This is just crazy. I've gone through some like three lots of this, uh, you know, to solder braid. I've had to buy some more to solder braid, I've got three, three more of those. And I'll show you the empty tubes that have stocked up just from this video here. I've got one, two, three, and I've been using this really super sparingly. That one's, well, uh, just about almost half done. And I've used about a quarter of a tube of this as well. It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's because the chips have been off. Those neobuffs have been on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. As I work my way around them, trying to work out which ones are faulty, which is all of them. It's nearly all of them. There's hardly any. I would estimate something like 20% of them work. So I got onto the final one, and you can see how this one's behaving now. This was given, I think, just like a green or an orange screen or something originally. Wasn't doing anything at all. Uh, sorry, the colours are awful there. It's because it's green on yellow. As you can see, it's given a W RAM error. Uh, now I think it's going to be Neo Buff again. You can screen, you know, because the colours are a clue there. In fact, the colours are wrong. And if we hold down all the buttons and press select to start, it watchdogs. I've seen that before. When you've got a problem with the data bus, well, obviously, you know, you're going to get a watchdog if you've got a problem with the data bus. I think it's coming to test the W RAM and that pallet. The above is causing the problem. Yeah, another example of this problem here. I've changed it, and you can see it's uh, it's not responding now. Controls aren't working. It's stuck on testing the pallet stuff. Now, if I press select and start, that works. But did you see it passed the BRAM test? Despite the fact a minute ago with the other Neo Buff, it was saying the BRAM was bad. This is the problem with these. The, you know they're intermittent they behave in really strange ways some of them output when they shouldn't do uh, you're getting all sorts of weird things going on I mean, you can see I can get into the control menu there directions aren't working which suggests I've got a problem with the uh, controller near above but it could just be this pallet one interfering with it uh, I think I can press A yeah I can A is working nothing else is so I swapped the one relate to controller and we've got the controller back actually so we can test the WRAM, you can see that's passing uh, I'll have to hold all the buttons down back round again Call bars, yeah we've got blue scales there because the pallet's not right same thing again, calendar wait for calendar pulse, that's not working I'm thinking the 259 actually, I'm going to swap the 259, 259 in a minute Let's just switch that off and on again. I'll go back into the menu. Because I find it coincidental we've got a calendar problem and a pallet problem. Uh, if we go into the VRAM, hold the button down, passes. Yeah, that's working. And to the 2K VRAM, passes. That's good. So, that is leaving me with a pallet problem and a calendar problem. So I swapped out the 259, I'm not sure that's uh, got the same bearing in this circuit as it does in the one I've said. Uh, but anyway, that made no difference. Uh, just coming back to the calendar side of things, if we just have a look over here. Can you see we've got uh, some corroded pins here where the battery has leaked. So in the first instance I'm just going to get some flux on there and reflow that. Just test connectivity because we've got one or two uh, pads there that just look awful. Uh, we might need to swap out the crystal, we might need to swap out this chip, but I'm just going to see if that resolves the calendar issue. It may well be that the calendar's causing the issue with the pallet here, or it may well be. Uh, I'm more likely to inclined to believe we've still got a fault here, but it could be one of the uh, pallet rams, uh, assuming these are the pallet rams here, I think. Yeah, so with regards to the real-time clock, you can see there, uh, just about, we've got a nick in the trace. I've scratched the copper off the top, but there's a nick. So I'm just going to join that up with a single strand of uh, coil wire. Um, I do need to reflow, you know, clean up around here because I just loosely uh, or quickly reflowed. Um, yeah, there's a bit of copper exposed there, but everything around there looks okay. But I do think that's probably the issue. It's going to the uh, HC32 here. As you can see, that wire just fixed the uh, calendar issue. So the only problem we've got with this nail is the uh, pallets. Uh, I'm tempted to just test the Z80 out actually. So I'll hold down D. Oh my god, we found a board that's actually got a fully working Z80 side of things. 
Uh, yeah, there's hope for this board. Because all we've got now is a pallet issue. Um, now, I'm wondering actually about the actual pallet ramp. Because the colour issue we're seeing, you know, that, that blue is the same with the other Neo Buff that I tried on this board. So I think I've got two Neo Buffs there that might actually be okay. Um, and it could just be the RAM. If we just let that time out, it'll come up saying the output enable's not right. It could also be, I think there's a HC32 HD, there that might be related to that. I'll have a look at that in a sec. We'll probe it just to see if that's okay. Let's wait for that to time out. Yeah, pallet RAM dead, output lower. And it seems to be consistent, so I'll uh, I'll check its um, output enable pins and things, and I'll check the HC32s that are nearby because there's three of them there that I think are responsible for some of the uh, output enables and things on ship slacks. But I thought it'd be useful just to test a game actually, just to see if it's actually working as a whole. Uh, and is GA11 working? And it is. Let me just turn it down. Yeah, so you can see the graphics, obviously the pallet's just the problem here. Put some credits in. I did, like I say, test all player one controls and the diagnostics and that seemed okay. Well, that seems alright, actually. So yeah, there is a good chance this board is going to be relatively easy to fix compared to the others. The interesting thing here is I swap the pallet ramps around, as you can see. We get nothing but these weird lines. Now, the other two boards are displaying the same sort of behaviour, actually. If I hold down D, and I've got the M1 Diag in there, you can hear it. So the system is working, but we're getting no display. So yeah, I'm going to have to swap out those pallet RAMs, I think. I think they're faulty. Yeah, so after some juggling around with the RAM chips, I swapped the 273s originally. I wasn't getting anywhere, it was just the same. I swapped the RAM chips. At one point, all they had was a blue screen, and they had lines coming across the screen, just like on two of the other boards where I suspected maybe there was something wrong with the PAL, not the PAL, but the PAL chips. And actually, that's changed my view. I do think it's the PAL, because I took the RAMs off one of those boards, put them on here. It was a solid blue screen. Um, and look at that after it finishes. Now, one of the RAM, to, to get the display working again, I should explain, to get the picture back up here again, away from the blue screen I had, I took one of the pallet rams off a board that was actually coming up properly with the right colours. Uh, so that is the bottom chip and it's displaying as it did previously. So I'm thinking now I'm going to swap the top chip out from that same board actually. Um, it might be the same, we might still have the blue the blue there to start with. There could be something more going on on this board to do with the uh, chip selects or the right enables or something or the output enables. But I'd like to rule out that other RAM chip now, because I do know that all the RAM chips have been taken off the other, the, the other two boards that give a, a grey or a blue screen. They seem to be faulty. So back over to this board. This has got, uh, yeah, controls are crazy, so we need, uh, you know, replacement uh, Neo buff for that one there. Uh, upper B RAM, which we'll deal with last, but also I've marked on here pallet RAM. So this had a problem with pallet RAM, and I think I proved that by removing the pallet RAM and testing it under the board, and... Uh, yeah, I was getting nothing at all uh, with one of them. Uh, so, I've got some replacement pallet RAM chips here. These are Liontech ones. I'll show you the part number in a minute. But I'm just going to quickly have a go at fitting a couple of those and just test it out. So, I went away and produced these two PCBs, actually. You can see here the Neo Duff, which was just a bypass for the GA11 spot. Same as you're doing all those individual wires. And uh, the Neo Guff which is uh, you know, a fully bi-directional replacement for the Neo um, buff chip. Uh, now this is version 1, so version 2 I've already done and I've added castellated edges, so you know, what that means is you've got a via uh, going through the end of each uh, connection there, you know, and it's straight through the middle of the via, the cut on the edge of the board, so that it's easy to join um, onto uh, the PCB there. So yeah, this is a version, these are version one of these boards. The underside has got solder there, that is not what I intended. I tried to put a mask over that, um, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what went wrong. Uh, it's the same on both of them. But what I can do is just put cut a slice of ins uh, uh, captain tape the size of the underneath there, so that's not a problem. Uh, and then it should just mount in place. The difficulty then is going to be joining. I don't think you can see, they haven't gone right to the very edge with the cut. Uh, you know, it's like they've cut the pads, but then the, the board comes out a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. So what I'll probably have to do is just get a file and just gently, very, very lightly file each side. They're really thin these, like 0.6 millimeters. So 
hopefully I should be able to join it up with enough solar there but that's the, the next dilemma am I going to be able to join this up I've had a bit of an inspection and the traces and things uh, yeah you're not going to be able to see them the traces look okay um, the 0.6 mil I think you know they're really small 6 mil sorry not 0.6 the 6 mil mil being a thousandth of an inch I think uh, yeah I'm not sure exactly how they work it out but these boards are so small 1.2 millimeters uh, squared uh, and look at the size of the ICs I've gone for here I'll show you them in a sec it's gonna be super hard trying to solder those on my nails need cutting as usual they always do <laughs> these videos always prompt me to go cut my nails um, yeah so uh, yeah I'll show you the chips we'll try and get that on there it's kind of it's QFN type I think it's like the the smallest version of QFN um, so in theory as long as we get enough flux and on there we should be able to drag solder around and hopefully we should be able to get the chips on the alternative is to use some paste I haven't got a stencil but you know you could just tin them up and then use hot air to stick the IC on um, the other thing I need to do still need to do onto my version 2 revision is perhaps add a couple of uh, caps one cap at least on there, you know, a bypass cap, 100 nanofarads or something, but it should be alright without it, because there's going to be one nearby on the board for this, you know, uh, for the original IC that was there, so in theory it probably doesn't need to, uh, you know, to need to be done. The other thing is, I haven't, uh, whereas on the underside here I've got this large ground plane, there's no ground plane on the top side, but to be fair, it's, the traces are so thin and so close to each other, it's near impossible to accommodate that, I think, actually. Um, so the nearest you get is, you know, it's a super thin PCB, let's just do the underside. Um, and as I say, in revision 2, I think I'm going to make sure that that's totally masked off there. Um, I don't want, uh, yeah, that exposed like that. I might have a go with the bypass one first, because this is going to be the easiest one to test. I'll take one of the uh, systems that I've got working. Um, Remove GA11. I'll show you that it doesn't boot with the cart. You know the cart there with the GA11 missing, uh, and we'll just install this. I think. Well, I've managed to assemble one. I'll show you how I did it in a minute. It's taken quite a while actually. It's a case of trial and different processes and things to work out the best way of doing it. I'll put your macro so you can have a closer look. Uh, it's God. It's hard to do this. It's hard to even get the thing close enough to the camera. It's so small. Can you see? Yeah, we've got uh, good solder points on there around the sides. The PCB, like I say, uh, does need trimming down really. The lens is steaming up because I'm getting too close to it. I don't know if you could see that. Um, but yeah, the solder points are alright. But we've got, you know, just a little bit of an edge here around the PCB, you know, down here particularly. Can you see that? I don't know, quarter, uh, not even a quarter of a millimetre. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the difficulty. But I'm tempted to just give this a go now, actually, and see if I can join it up. Uh, I mean, the worst case is that I'd have to use little wires or something, but I really want to avoid that. I might be better off waiting for version 2 before I start doing these, you know, fitting any of these in volume. Uh, but I am keen to see if this works. It's back to the drawing board, I think. I think I need to do a revision to the V2 board that I've, uh, you know, I've updated. Uh, because the, the the height here of this PCB, even though it's 0.6 millimeters, because we've not got a castellated edge, it's just impossible to join it up. I've managed to join a couple of connections there to hold it in place, but the, the height is too much, the gap is too much, and then because the pads are not going right to the edge of the PCB, you know, I had to file it down with a Dremel. It took ages trying to get it just, just, just right, and it's still too high. You know, it's still there's too, still too much distance between the uh, you know the pad on the board to the pad on the replacement, you know, on the little Neo Guff board here. So I'm going to do a revision. They're only cheap, these. It's like $15 or something to prototype this. So I'll order some more, but it is going to be a couple of weeks at least waiting for the, the new ones to come. And I think the revision I'm going to do, actually, I suspect if I'd castellated the edges, uh, dirty PCBs would do the same thing they've done to me with this, where they trim it with uh, a, a, di a distance of the PCB, you know, still there between the pad and the edge of the PCB. And I don't want to be dremeling every single one of these down. So I actually think, you know, the PCB size as it was is actually okay. With the exception, obviously, you can't join the pads up. So I think what I'm going to do is via every single one of the pads, but pass them through to the same footprint on the underside so that it could be mounted sort of BGA style-ish. 
uh, and I think that's perhaps going to be the best bet because what you could then do is pre-solder all of the uh, connections on your uh, chip profile uh, on the board that is on the main board here uh, and then just uh, you know add some flux on the underside of the uh, little PCB here even add some solder on the underneath as well uh, and just use hot air to mount it I actually think that's probably going to be the easiest way to get uh, a good join here that's reliable uh, that's fairly easy to uh, you know to fit as well so another abrupt end to this video unfortunately again I've had to cut so much footage out and there's uh, not really been uh, you know I haven't actually filmed an intro an extra for each part here um, I've just got a crazy amount of footage I'm trying to work through I think there's gonna be at least another two parts maybe three parts after this um, but we're getting there. So this is one of the 1F. This is the one I was looking at right at the very start of the video. So I didn't show you the work I've done on here. So we'll cover this uh, in another video. There's some interesting behaviour going on with this board. Um, it's really thrown me actually. But we've also got uh, this, another 1F, set by Mike here. And again, you can see this one suffered uh, damage in the same sort of way, corrosion around here. And someone's had to go out fixing it with a bodge wire or something there. But anyway, we'll, uh, I think we'll look at these two 1F boards at the end of the series here. We've also got a 1FZ, so we'll perhaps look at that shortly as well. Uh, that's part of the same series. Beyond that, I've also got a Neo Geo 1B, which I've fixed as well. So I could upload that at some point. So I might try and break up some of these videos by releasing other bits and pieces in between just to uh, avoid uh, driving people to despair. These boards have driven me to despair. Anyway, I do hope you find that interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next part.